The Nikon ZF looks amazing, and I think Canon is next. Truth be told, up until now, there's only been two major players in the game of retro modern cameras. One, of course, being Leica with the Leica M line that has been making retro-infused modern digital cameras since the original Leica M8, which, as far as I'm aware, was the first mirrorless camera in existence. And then, of course, Fujifilm, which, with the X100 line, started a retrofied styling that has taken the world by storm, especially since the pandemic and TikTok made the X100V one of the most most sought after and lusted after cameras in existence. The fact that a modern camera is being sold for more than it was released for just a couple of years ago is quite an achievement, and Fuji themselves have a predicament because the X100V is not being manufactured anymore, and they are just selling like crazy on the used market. This is just a thoughts video in my backyard talking about what I think camera manufacturers should be doing moving forward to compete with the ever-growing, ever-advancing, ever-improving mobile phone photography slash video market, as well as my official thoughts on the Nikon ZF based off of the reviews and first looks that I've seen from my fellow YouTubers and being a Nikon Z shooter for a period of time. Now, first off, why retro styling with modern cameras? Isn't it kind of pointless? Well, I don't think so. People want to feel something. And I think every camera manufacturer moving forward should consider this as they develop cameras, specifically because of how fast mobile photography and filmmaking is advancing. It's getting to a point now where with the new iPhone 15 Pro from some of the first footage I've seen from Matty Apoya, the footage is looking as good as many cinema cameras in the past. And I just think it's gonna continue to advance to a point where using proper cameras for the majority of the time is gonna become maybe a thing of the past. When you think of a camera, what do you think of? Probably something that looks like this. In fact, even today when you search for camera in your emojis on your phone, it's gonna pull up a camera that looks similar to this retro Canon AE-1 or a Leica camera. I feel like Leica just created an image that has never left people's minds in terms of what a camera's supposed to look like. It's beautiful, it's handmade. Those Leica M bodies still encompass kind of what people imagine in their mind as a camera. As technology has advanced, camera companies have obviously pushed the envelope in terms of what the cameras can capture and the function of those cameras has gone with that. Gone are the days of the top dial shutter speed adjustment and on lens aperture control because the cameras we shoot on are essentially computers. So we just need the easiest, fastest way to access those settings and then the computer can adjust those settings for us. We're not having to literally manually adjust things because there's a computer chip inside of our cameras. I sound like such a boomer computer chip computer chip in the camera. But just like many artists who draw and paint on real paper using pens and paintbrushes, and car enthusiasts who continue to buy manual stick shift gas powered vehicles, there's just something to it that I think is innately human. And with the exception of Leica and Fujifilm, Camera manufacturers just haven't made this part of their consideration when they're building a camera. The camera is serving a function and not so much of a form. We'll enter the Nikon ZF. Everything that you would want from a modern technological perspective jammed into a beautiful form. Function and form combined. I don't know what it is, but there is something to this type of design. Maybe it's just pure nostalgia. Maybe it's because I remember my dad using a Pentax that looked a lot like this, taking images of me on film as a child. But I do think it goes beyond nostalgia. I think there is an objective beauty to the design of this camera and many 50s and 60 era design products. Back then, in order to stand out, they had to design something that looked beautiful on a shelf. There was no such thing is the internet. There were only magazine advertisements and in-store examples for people who are buying cameras. And the one that looked the prettiest was probably the one that your mom would purchase. Now, of course, professionals were always looking for the most features that they could use to better enhance their photography. But I believe in the 50s and 60s, we had design overall that was just built around making it look beautiful as well as functional because of the lack of internet. There was just a need for that product to stand out amongst the others when you would see a car driving down the street, when you would see a camera on a shelf. 
Over the last decade, every camera has essentially looked the same. And here we are with Nikon that has a legacy of cameras that look very similar to the ZF, bringing what I feel like is much needed in the very uninteresting and uninspiring camera space. Overall, the Nikon ZF is giving us the same sensor as the Z6 Mark II, which is a well-respected sensor giving us very beautiful images, but coming with the same processor from their flagship Z8 and Z9 line all at a price point that is coming eerily close to the S5 II, which I discussed in my previous videos on this channel. And by the way, I'd like to thank any of you who are here because of the G9 video. I was wildly impressed by the feedback on that and the response to that video. Nikon's also added some new features that we've never seen before in any camera, making it extremely cutting edge. Nikon essentially has change the game with IBIS technology or whatever they're calling it, VR. And basically wherever your focus point is in the image, the IBIS is actually adjusting itself towards where that focus point is. In the past on IBIS technology, essentially the center was where the parallax movement was kind of happening. Well, now Nikon is essentially moving that parallax movement, the X, Y, and yaw, and whatever axis around whatever your focus point is, making sure that your images are as sharp as possible where you want your focus point. Really brilliant move by Nikon, and the fact that it's in a retrofied camera is really unique to me. And when I say retrofied, I feel like Nikon didn't really spare any expense on this. They actually made the body out of metal and the dials are made of brass. And even this camera doesn't have some of the luxuries that the ZF has because they actually embedded and embossed the metal for each shutter speed on top as well as the settings on the side and the switches and everything. The only thing I don't really like is that they, you know, had to keep all the dials and stuff on the back of the camera. This camera is obviously a digital camera, so it's gonna have to have some buttons to navigate the menu. I wish they would have put a little bit more thought into that to make it even more retrofied, but I just think this camera looks incredible. This is also the first time that Nikon has ever done a flip screen, a selfie screen on a camera. They've experimented with different types of flip out screens in the past, but this is a true kind of just run of the mill flip screen, which means that I think a lot of YouTubers and content creators are probably gonna be picking this camera up. The video specs are no slouch. We've got 4K at 60 frames per second, though there is a crop there but we're getting in-log internal with 10-bit recording, so you don't need an external recorder anymore. The past units had to do that. When I shot on the Nikon Z6 for my channel Kinotika, we had to shoot with the Atomos Ninja V to record anything in log, but to be fair, it did look beautiful straight out of the camera. And I do wanna speak to my experience with Nikon. I used the Nikon Z6 for about seven or eight months as my primary workhorse until I then switched to the Canon EOS R. But I found that that camera and the lenses that Nikon made were exceptional. Around that time, the Sony a7 III was kind of the primary camera that most of my friends were shooting on. And I did not like the way the Sony colors looked. But with the Nikon Z6, I found that Nikon's interpretation of color on that similar sensor, which by the way, I believe this camera has a very similar sensor to an A7 III sensor as well. But Nikon obviously has been in the game for a really long time. They know what color looks like. And I feel like they have a great interpretation of color. And I ended up using the Nikon Z6 to capture some of the very first moments of my youngest son's birth. And I cherish those photos forever, and I'm really proud of how those images look. But when I met one of the Nikon engineers at Photokina, the last Photokina ever in Germany, he told me that the way that Nikon built their mount in the Z line of lenses was to enable the weight of the lens to be kind of towards the back of the lens. A lot of camera manufacturers, I think Canon and Sony included, make their lenses pretty bulky, obviously, because it's a full frame sensor and they wanna put a lot of optics in it, but the balance of the lens can sometimes be a little too front heavy. Well, Nikon made their mount massive for the Z-Line, allowing them to put the center of gravity closer to the edge of the sensor and the back of the lens, 
making the lenses balance beautifully on the Nikon line. Anyways, I was a big fan of the Nikon system and it was a shame that it didn't have the flip out screen, that the autofocus wasn't where it should have been at the time. And of course the log and 10 bit recording wasn't enabled on the original Z6. So fast forward to today, it's been over four years and we've got this camera that's kind of giving me everything that I truly wanted with the original Z6 and more because it looks beautiful. Not only is Nikon giving us the best with the modern processor from the flagship cameras, but they're also giving me my favorite sensor size format, which is that 24 megapixel sensor. With the exception of the 4K 60 crop, which I'm not a fan of, this sensor allows a larger than 4K resolution to then downsize to 4K, making the 4K super sharp and crisp. And since the last four years, Nikon has obviously updated their autofocus algorithms. And of course, again, the flagship processor inside of that makes the autofocus performance just really best in class. Pair that with Nikon's retrofied 40 millimeter prime, which I've heard from the art of photography is an amazing optic, surprisingly. Usually those small optics are compromised in image quality, giving you a very small compact retro setup, similar to what this, you know, 50 millimeter 1.8 prime on the AE-1 looks like. I don't know, but I have a feeling that this camera may actually sell really well. With Fuji not addressing the demand for the X100 line and focusing more on a $7,500 medium format camera, which by the way, does look amazing, makes me think that Nikon may be kind of playing the game well here. The ZFC has existed now for, I guess, a, about a year, an APS-C retro version of their Z50 line. But again, the their APS-C lineup isn't there and pros don't really want to go down from full frame to APS-C. But now with the ZF, you're getting all of the power, all of the pro features that you want, seriously, with no compromise, other than not a crazy high megapixel sensor, if that's important to you. This camera is essentially everything you would need to be a working photographer, and now you look cool, because the camera looks freaking awesome, and it makes you feel something when you hold it. I feel like emotion is one of the most underappreciated and under kind of focused on things about cameras. Who uses professional cameras anymore? Normal people do not buy cameras. I mean, just look at the iPhone 15 Pro and what it's capable of now. I feel like most people, even professionals, can get away with using their phone for a lot of things. So who's buying these cameras? Professional artists, photographers who make art with these devices. Don't you think artists would like a camera that actually looks also like art? Something that feels emotional when you pick it up, that reminds you of your parents, your grandparents when you pick it up, reminds you of the film cameras of yesteryear. The fact that Canon has a wealth of beautiful retro cameras like this makes me think that they may be next. Nikon took a chance here by making the ZF, and I think Canon is keeping an eye out and maybe is going to do something like this. Though, if I know anything about Canon, it's that they are stubborn as heck. And I don't necessarily see them doing this without some limitations. And that's where I hope Canon learns from Nikon. The ZF has no compromise and yet it still looks beautiful and has emotion to it. It seems like it was built by actual humans rather than a design that clearly was built by robots. <laughs> now, I do think overall Canon does have some of the most intuitive menu systems and intuitive cameras to use and ergonomically make beautiful hand grips. And I do think their lenses are fantastic, but I just wish that Canon would lean into the fact that they have access to amazing IP like the AE-1. Can you imagine an A, like what would it be? An RF AE or Canon AER? I don't know. Is that what they would call it? An RF mount version of the AE-1 with essentially a 6D Mark II sensor and processor inside of it. I feel like that would sell like crazy. Also, I want to give Nikon a Big round of applause for the micro SD card that's in the ZF. Did you guys see that in any of the reviews? I think that's so brilliant. I don't 
remember ever seeing a professional camera with a micro SD card slot. The fact that they're giving you two memory card slots in a camera like this, again, makes me think that they are kind of targeting it towards professionals. Maybe some professionals say, hey, I love this retro camera design, but I'm just not going to use it on anything because it doesn't have a backup recording. It's like, well, it is small. How do we make it work? We could do internal memory, which I hope more camera manufacturers do, or we could put a micro SD card in there. I mean, why not? It's fast media. It's cheap media. You could get it anywhere. You could have raw going to the SD card and then your JPEGs going to the micro or probably both. I think it's fast enough to do both raw and JPEG on a micro SD card. <laughs> fantastic idea. Look, camera manufacturers have to start getting creative again and making art. Make products that inspire us, like this AE-1, like the Leica system. The reason that everybody lusts after Leica is because they're beautiful, handmade, German-made tools that, yes, they serve a function, they make photography, but gosh, they're so beautiful to look at. And there's actual inspiration that comes about with devices that inspire you. I don't know. It's hard to put into words, to be completely honest. And I might be a little too in the clouds about all this. What are your thoughts on the ZF? And if you liked this video, maybe you'll like this one here. Thanks. Canon, make this, please. Come on, please. Just make one of these digital with no compromise.